Hello, friends. We start into the book of Mark today. So the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are written from four different perspectives and four different uh, experiences. Matthew, Mark, and John all demonstrated that they witnessed what Jesus did and said and how he taught and so forth. And then Luke was the journalist, the doctor who investigated everything and assembled all of these stories from all the people that did witness it. So these are true accounts of everything that happened with Jesus. And what's amazing about these four, they come from different angles, different perspectives, different people, different stories, and yet they all work out to be the same. That Jesus was who he claimed to be, that he was perfect, lived a perfect life on earth, that he that he did demonstrate how to live in the way God designed us to live. And then he died and was buried and resurrected again on the third day to create a way for us to reconnect with God, the Father, and to give us eternal life if we accept him. So Mark chapter one is Mark's version of that. Mark was not one of the original 12 disciples. He was one of them that witnessed what Jesus was doing. He was part of the story and he gives his account, and he was the first to write out an account of Jesus's life and story. And so he doesn't start from the birth because that wasn't where he started his experience with Jesus. He starts from baptism and from the things that happened soon after Jesus started his ministry. And in Mark chapter 1, verse 17, is the summation of the story of Peter's calling, Simon Peter called to follow Jesus. And he says that he records what Jesus said to Simon, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you into a fisher of men. I love that version. I like the way that's stated because Jesus is not interested in just having us do things for him. He's interested in us following him to become something. Now, the story brings back a memory of mine Years ago when uh, Heather, our daughter, was growing up, she was a young kid, we had a pool in our neighborhood in our uh, apartment complex. This was right after Diane and I got married. She was about six years old. And so I took her to the pool one Saturday to help her learn how to swim. And she was, she was, she loves the water. She loves being in the water, but she doesn't like getting beyond the shallow end. She stayed in the shallow and she wouldn't even try it. She wouldn't learn to swim. She wouldn't take her feet off the bottom. I couldn't get her to float. Just She just didn't enjoy it. But at one point, she figured out how to jump into the pool with me catching her. She loved that. Over and over and over again, she would do that. As long as I stayed in the shallow end where she could touch with her feet and still keep her head above water, she loved it. Well, one of those days, I started to inch down deeper and deeper into the water, tried to make it so that she couldn't even notice, and jump in and jump in and jump in and jump in she did until she finally got beyond the point at which she could touch bottom. Now, she didn't know it at the time because I was catching her so high in the air, and then I just put her back up on the ledge that she was in deep waters. <laughs> it took her a while to figure that out. And then she didn't like it so much, but she became less afraid of it. Jesus does the same thing with all of us. I love that about the way Mark approaches Jesus' ministry. He starts right from the get-go with Jesus' baptism and the launch of his ministry, and then the calling of Simon Peter and the miracles that he starts to perform. Mark just captures what Jesus did. He loves to see and show us exactly the stories of what Jesus accomplished and what he did around Galilee. And for Mark and for all the disciples, it was as if Jesus started in the shallow end, started with the things doing for them, letting them get their feet wet, and then slowly and surely taking them over that three-year journey into deeper and deeper waters to the point that after the resurrection, they are not afraid of anybody or anything that tries to stop them from telling the story of Jesus. Mark has his own story later on. Maybe we'll cover that as part of this study where he does get afraid, but he'll be reminded of this same calling of Peter way back in Mark chapter one, where Jesus tells Simon Peter, follow me, I'll take care of the rest. I'll make you into something. Instead of fishing, I'll make you into a fisher of men. Maybe Jesus is wanting to do the same thing in your life right now. Maybe you feel like you're in over your head and you need someone to catch you. Well, Jesus loves to start us in the shallow end and then show us that we can trust him in the deep end. 
Let him do that with you this week. Let him use you in some way that feels deeper than you can go, but trust him to catch you in the process. <laughs> he is always faithful, and he loves to take us in the deep end, showing us we're ready when we go with him. God bless you as you do. We'll continue in Mark tomorrow.